Greetings. Uh, the purpose of this video will be to um, expose what I consider to be misconduct by uh, now semi-famous attorney John Loro uh, in his uh, defense of uh, Wendy Adelson in Florida, Tallahassee case, the murder of Dan Markell, her former husband, uh, ever since the murder took place in 2014, as far as I know, he's been representing her, her or her family. Um, and he is now representing Donald Trump. Um, but there's a very, I consider to be an urgent situation, a danger. Um, um, and I'll, I'll try to explain this, but I, I, I don't want to keep people in suspense. I believe there's a, a, a serious danger that John Loro's client, Wendy Adelson, and her, uh, what I consider to be co-conspirators in the murder of her ex-husband in a custody dispute, uh, will do a murder-suicide uh, because the kids, Dan Markell's children, Wendy's children, I think are now catching on and asking questions. Uh, they were very young when the murder happened in 2014, but now the uh, their uncle, Charlie Adelson, has been arrested. So they're asking questions, right, of uh, John Loro's client, Wendy Adelson, which Wendy, because she's guilty, is my opinion, cannot handle it, probably enraging her and her mom uh, and realizing that they uh, are, that the kids are realizing that she murdered their father, It's my opinion, Uh and then seeing no way out, except, you know, life in prison, uh, will do a murder-suicide. Uh, so I hope I've articulated that. The, the thing is, and the purpose of this video then is to, uh, for, first of all, I've been threatened by John Loro, uh, who uh, um, threatened to uh, seek a court restraining order against me for supposed harassment of Wendy Adelson. So I have to be very careful in the way that I word this uh, because I don't really want to get involved in any litigation with him. On the other hand, I do uh, feel that now is a good time to raise to public awareness to try and prevent a murder-suicide that I've just described, uh, hopefully adequately, of by John Loro's client and her mother um, and father, a murder-suicide of themselves and Dan Markell's children, because the, it would be prompted by Dan Markell's children now in their early teens, and with the, with uh, Charlie Adelson, John Loro's client's brother, under criminal trial for the murder. So the, if, if Dan and Markell's children are, are asking too many questions, then, then John Loro's client, Wendy Adelson, could do a murder-suicide of the children and themselves. Um, given the fact that he's so litigious, um, it could be that now is a prudent time for me to end this video. Um, and in the interest of... But I, I, I want to just mention something that he's done, which I think is... Um, as far as I know, it's a violation of attorney ethics. He said in uh, the, um, th this, this murder case has stretched on for, for about nine years. He, he's, he's trying to exhaust uh, prosecutors, just like he's doing with the Trump case, uh, hoping they'll go away and give up and there'll never be a criminal arrest and trial of his client, Wendy Adelson, even though the prosecutor in the case uh, uh, Assistant State Attorney Barbara Kappelman has stated publicly her theory of the case. She's very cautious not to arrest Wendy Adelson. She only gets one bite of the apple. If, if it's, it could be an O.J. Simpson case where uh, a guilty party gets acquitted, if she doesn't uh, make sure that she has all of the, she can prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. It's taken so long, he's been uh, finding every way he can, including uh, representing uh, Wendy Adelson while she's committing perjury. Um, but but I, I want to get to a, a thing which uh, I think the public is entitled to know, uh, which I've articulated in previous videos, but now it's going too 
uh, John Laurel, um, um, and it has to do with the critical events relating to Jeffrey Lacasse. Um, so here comes, this is almost this is a summary of, the, of that case. Um, uh, Wendy Adelson and Dan Markell were uh, in Tallahassee. He was a law professor. She may have been, uh, I don't remember all the details. Anyways, uh, she decided she wanted a divorce uh, and she wanted to take the kids with her from Tallahassee where they were born to South Florida where her family lived. But the court said, well, no, the kids uh, are Tallahassee kids. They were born here, raised here. They stay here. Uh, and she was upset about it. And uh, lo and behold, um, Dan Markell gets murdered and she gets to move the kids to, ta to South Florida. Um, Jeffrey Lacasse was, uh, um, I think, it's professor of social work at FSU, and she started dating him uh, after she was divorced from Dan Markell. Uh, but the, here comes the uh, Alfred Hitchcock twist. Um, I, uh, if, 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 you, if you watch the Dateline coverage on this, the ABC 2020, uh, uh, recently there was a good thing on uh, Court TV, I believe, uh, 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 you, you can Google it. Uh, anyway, so, um, but, but here, here, here we now we get to the suspense. So she's dating Jeffrey Lacoste, and she decides to uh, break it off with him. Uh, but she says in the in the final, you know, uh, last time that they can communicate, she says, uh, "When will you be leaving uh, to go to Tennessee?" Because she knew that 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 Jeffrey Lacoste would then be passing uh, near Dan Markell's house where I submit, in my opinion, she was planning to murder uh, Dan Markell, but she wanted to pin it on Jeffrey Lacasse. And this has come out in testimony. I'm, I'm not uh, sharing, I, there, there's critical, if you watch Jeffrey Lacasse testimony in this, I think you'll come to the very conclusion that I'm enunciating. And um, so he says, I'll be leaving for Tennessee this Friday at 11 a.m. So you, the viewer, see if you can guess when the murder took place. Um, Friday at 11 a.m. And that's, she, she knew that, he, that Jeffrey Lacasse, her boyfriend post Dan Markell that she just broke up with, uh, would be uh, driving near Dan Markell's house on his way to Tennessee on Friday at 11 a.m. Well, um, luckiest thing probably, I think Professor Lacasse might agree, uh, in his life is that uh, he decided to leave early and left on Thursday night. So by the time the murder went down, when when Wendy had insisted to, with two or three pointed questions as they were breaking up, when will you be going to Tennessee Friday at 11? When the murder went down on Friday at 11 a.m., he was already out of state and he has Walmart receipts, probably gas receipts, this and that. And so he had the perfect alibi, if you will. She went in, gave five hours of statements to the Tallahassee police on that day. The last time she really talked to the police because she was, she did not know yet that um, this is my opinion that I'm giving you now. Um, but if if you watch the testimony, I think you you'll have the same opinion uh, that her frame of Jeffrey Lacasse had been undone. She thought she had the perfect frame. Uh, uh, jilted boyfriend uh, trying to kill the ex-husband to claim the love of Wendy Adelson. Uh, everything was perfect except that Jeffrey Lacasse, this is really funny, uh, feeling lonely, left early to be with his friends in Tennessee. And, uh, and, and Wendy Adelson, John Laurel's client, uh, never talked to the police uh, again, basically. Um, anyway, so Je uh, John Loro um, uh, in a published Fox News article, online article, 
said that there had been no evidence whatsoever uh, uh, um, presented uh, in any way inculpating his client, Wendy Adelson. Well, uh, there was uh, extensive testimony by Jeffrey Lacasse. And uh, what, what shows that uh, John Loro, in my opinion, violated attorney ethics, which prohibit dishonesty, um, is that when, when, they, when his client, Wendy Adelson, was deposed about Jeffrey Lacasse, he kept saying, plead the fifth, plead the fifth, plead the fifth, plead the fifth. Uh, so why would he tell his client to plead the fifth if there's no evidence, nil, he says, against her? Do you follow me? Um, believe me, if, if, if you watch the uh, online coverage of this, go to, uh, I think it's mentorlawyer.com is, is perhaps the best website to get it, but there's, you could see it on Dateline, ABC 2020, Tallahassee, uh, newspaper Tallahassee Democrat. There's, there's coverage of, the te- of John Jeffrey Lacasse's testimony. You, you'll come to the conclusions I'm articulating here. Uh, anyways, uh, it's now 11 minutes into this. Uh, I'm trying to uh, avoid uh, being wrongfully sued by John Loro, so I'm going to be uh, cautious and end it here. But I, I want to close on on the concern that I articulated and raise this to the public in an effort to prevent a murder-suicide. Um, now that Charlie Adelson, Wendy Adelson's brother, remember, Wendy is John Loro's client, now for going on close to t- nine years. Um, um, uh, the kids, Dan Markell's kids, Wendy Adelson's kids, doubtless in their early teens, uh, are knowing that their uncle is under arrest for the murder, are asking John Loro's client, Wendy Adelson, their mother, questions. But the mother who, even the... the <clears throat> prosecutor in the case, Barbara Kappelman, has articulated her, her theory of the case is that Wendy is guilty uh, of one of several people uh, in conspiring to, to perpetrate this murder, doesn't want to uh, inculpate her with her kids, is angry with the kids for asking the questions and seeing no way out. Um, my, my fear is that... Um, uh, They'll they'll do a murder suicide, um, and I. Um, so, Mr. Laurel, what what are you doing to prevent that? Why why don't you uh, agree to um, have the kids uh, transferred to the custody custody of the grandmother? 